let's make it more difficult now. Now, what if the losses are, are, are not fixed, are not observable, if we need to model them? What if we go for other claim count uh, distributions? What should be done uh, then, right? So what we want to do is uh, we will consider in this chapter two broad ways to build a model for the amount paid over all claims. And you should see this all claims that can be on an individual uh, insurance policy, all claims reported during a specific period of exposure, for example, or it could be all claims reported on a complete portfolio of, of insurance contracts uh, and so on. Yeah? So we, were, we will be working in a fixed time period, of course, because you need to specify the time period over which you're collecting these, these losses. And of course, you also need to define uh, on which um, group of insurance contracts you're working. Now, if you look at the, um, at the actuarial literature, two famous models to do this uh, have been introduced and we're gonna meet them in this, in this chapter. And these are the, uh, the collective risk model on the one hand and the individual risk model on the other hand. And uh, we're gonna give a formal definition of them, um, but the, the main difference between these two is that in the collective risk model, you're gonna focus on recording the payments, right? So you're gonna take a prepayment approach if you want, and you're gonna add the payments, right? So the payments, that means that um, the value of zero will not be allowed for a payment. So you're only gonna focus on, okay, when was there an event that actually led to a payment being different from zero, right? If you look at the individual risk model, then we're gonna say, we're gonna focus on, on all of the contracts and we're gonna assign a random variable to each of those contracts. That random variable can take the value of zero if nothing happens in terms of a, a compensation that we need to pay to our policyholder, and we're going to add these up. Yeah. So the latter approach, you will see that often coming back in life insurance or, or uh, health insurance kind of, of, of structures or something. Whereas this collective uh, risk model, I would say that's really the kind of thinking that we apply in, in a non-life insurance context where we focus on this frequency and severity um, strategy, right? So let's see how these two work. If you look at the collective risk model, it has the following representation. So you look at the total loss S, the total or the aggregate loss, that's the same. Uh, we're going to model it with a, with a compound um, with a compound uh, sum random variable. So we're gonna write it as x1 plus x2 and so on plus xn, where this n is of course referring to the number of uh, events with a payment. So the number of individual uh, payment amounts or the number of insured events leading to a payment that is different from, from zero. And of course, in order to, to get around with working with this random variable s, we're gonna make a few assumptions we're gonna make a few independence assumptions. And these are that given the value of n, the random variables x1 up to xn are iid. Given the random variable n, the common distribution of those x's does not depend on n. And the distribution of n does not depend in any way on the values of, of, the, of the losses of the payment amounts, right? So these are typical assumptions. You can relax those, of course. I, you, you can see in the literature of insurance pricing, for example, that there are papers which uh, apply a so-called copula approach uh, to, to capture some dependence between n and between the severity uh, random variables. But in its basic setting, uh, and the one that is most used in practice, uh, we're going to work under these independence assumptions because they will help us to get a grip on what the distribution of s uh, will be like and how we can work with this distribution. So this is the collective risk model. Uh, if you then look at the individual risk model, that represents the aggregate loss once again as a sum S, but now uh, it's not a compound sum. It is X1 plus X2 and so on plus X small n, right? We have a fixed number N of insurance contracts. The loss amounts for these N contracts are denoted with X1 up to Xn. Uh, we assume the Xj's to be independent, but they're not assumed to be identically distributed. And they can have a probability mass at zero, which would then correspond to the probability of no loss or payment on a particular contract. Yeah? 
So what we'll see here is that this type of model is um, used typically uh, if you look at a group life policy. So if you look at life insurance contracts and, and, and you look at um, the total loss on this uh, life insurance contracts. And, and we're gonna see examples of that, but I just wanna mention that I have a very recent paper in the journal of uh, the Royal Statistical Society series A. We just came out and where we analyzed uh, the data from a, from a large Dutch pension fund. And we proposed there a certain kind of backtest, which, which is a financial backtest uh, to, that helps us to, um, to, to evaluate the performance of, of the mortality model that we uh, propose for the data in this Dutch pension fund. And at a certain point in, in developing this, this back test, we really relied on the type of calculations from this individual risk model. Yeah? So this is really something that can be handy if you uh, are looking at a collection of life insurance policies and you want to say something about the total loss uh, or the total uh, liability in this uh, group of, of life insurance contracts. Yeah? So we'll see examples uh, related to that uh, further on. So these are the two risk models that we're gonna work with in this chapter. So for now, we just give the definition and we're gonna play more with them uh, in the rest of this, uh, of this chapter, yeah? Now the following quiz question is coming up. Huh? So if you look at the distribution of S, let it be in the, in the individual model and in the, in the collective risk model, um, you can get it in, in two ways. You could say, um, I'm gonna, uh, model, or I'm gonna, I, I should put it differently, I'm gonna collect data on the frequency n, uh, the, the count random variable on the one hand, and then the xj's that, that, that correspond to it, the severities on the other hand. Or you can directly collect data uh, about s, the total losses. Yeah, so my, my question for you is which of these two strategies would you prefer? So, so let's put it in terms of the data collection. So if you would be registering data, would you register the data directly at the level of S, as, as, as aggregate losses, huh? so observations of S directly? Or would you say, no, I would collect data on the N and collect data on, on the XJs, the severities, and I would make sure that I've got a database where, uh, where these uh, sources where these data are carefully collected. Which one, which approach would you uh, prefer? So let's think about this. Huh? So I said, okay, I would indeed recommend to collect the observations at the most granular level possible. And you can think about multiple reasons why, why that could be. And, and the first reason is if you have the data at the most granular level possible, then you can always go to the aggregate level, right? By adding the uh, losses in, in, in the appropriate way. But you cannot do that the other way around. If you collect the data at the level of S, then you cannot go back to um, extracting from this S detailed information about the distribution of N and the distributions of the, of the XJ. That would not be possible in the other way around. If you look at the discussion in the book, then the authors of our, of our book, they give multiple reasons. Huh? You, can, you can look at the book. They, they say, for instance, yeah, if you, um, um, if you would impose a deductible, for example, or if you would impose a policy limit, um, for example, at the level of the individual losses, then you, if you just collect your information at, at the aggregate level, then it would not be clear huh? um, how you can, uh, yeah, how, how, the, how imposing, or what the impact would be of imposing this, this deductible uh, or this policy limit at the individual uh, losses. Yeah? If you change the number of policies, um, then maybe you don't see that directly being reflected in, 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 in the total, um, in, in the observations that you collect at the level of S. Huh? Then again, it's, it's better if you collect those data at the most granular level and if you monitor, if you collect information at the level of each individual contract in your in your group of contracts yeah so i would say the main message is here you can go from the granular level to the aggregate level but not the other way around then information get lots gets lost and then it's difficult to 
uh, retrieve detailed information. 